and I request protocol to escort His Excellency. The Assembly will hear an address by His Excellency Guillermo Lasso Mendoza, Constitutional President of the Republic of Ecuador. I request protocol to escort His Excellency. On behalf of the General Assembly, I have the honor to welcome His Excellency Guillermo Lasso Mendoza, Constitutional President of the Republic of Ecuador, and to invite him to address the Assembly. Señor. Mr. President, Excellencies, at the beginning of this year, a young man from Colombia, whose name is Mateo, was going about his daily uh, uh, student activities in the east of Europe. As many um, migrant Latin Americans, Mateo was focused on pursuing his dreams. In this case, he was pursuing his medical degree in, at the National University of Zaporizhia. However, on uh, one day in February, this dream uh, was transformed into a nightmare uh, due to the absurd war of Russia against Ukraine. And while the whole world uh, witnessed uh, with horror the beginning of a war, the dimensions of which hadn't been seen in decades, Matteo actually experienced this in his own flesh. He... Uh, found himself very close to the most dangerous military uh, actions and uh, uh, by, due to my respect for him and his traumatic experience I prefer not to disclose these experiences. Now, uh, using his own ingenuity as well as the solidarity of other people, Matteo made use of various means of transport including, including uh, uh, on horseback uh, in order to uh, go directly to the closest border. In the meantime, while all this was taking place in Ecuador, we were in the process of establishing a national crisis committee which fulfilled its uh, goal of uh, repatriating 730 Ecuadorian citizens on board uh, of humanitarian flights. On one of these flights, in one of those flights, Mateo managed to find a seat. His uh, uh, sister is Equatorian, and so uh, that, that uh, transforms him in into part of our nas transnational family. His uh, Colombian parents today reside in Ecuador thanks to special uh, humanitarian visas that have been issued by our government. But it wasn't just Mateo. This same uh, story was experienced by various Colombian, uh, Peruvian, and other Latin American citizens, and even Ukrainians, who managed to escape the war thanks to this enormous diplomatic effort led by our country. I am uh, telling you all this because if you uh, take away just one message from me, I would like it to be uh, the following, that Ecuador is there to help the world. Ecuador leaves no one behind. And this is why I am sure that the world will leave no will not leave Ecuador behind in any of its specific challenges that it faces. Mr. President, Excellencies, when I prepare for these types of events, I usually consult uh, various experts in international relations. They usually mention to me the principles enshrined in the UN Charter, which speaks of sovereign equality of states, of good faith, the peaceful resolution of disputes, territorial integrity, and political independence. 
It also speaks of the non-use of force to resolve disputes. The full respect for human rights, and I could continue. All these uh, are admirable concepts that throughout almost eight decades have preserved relative stability that today is being challenged. However, I uh, preferred to begin my intervention by speaking of Mateo, a Latin American student who, uh, as thousands of others, was in Ukraine pursuing his dream. Because those who know me know that I am not a scholar or an academic or an assiduous attendee of uh, international forums. The reality is that most of my life I have uh, uh, cultivated a very simple idea and this idea is that the only way of generating value is by always always in all in every activity that uh, one carries out always putting human beings at the center because it is always in human beings that I place my trust I place my trust in people and I am going to tell you precisely why that is important I want to tell you why I believe that this is vital not only for a country but for the construction of a world that is more peaceful and stable I firmly believe that any institution or political system, whether it is national or international, derives its legitimacy from the uh, well-being that it is capable of creating for its citizens. It, it shouldn't only base its legitimacy in this, but it should renew that legitimacy daily based on the consent of the people who live in that system. And here, in this great institution, we form a family of nations. And nations, in fact, are themselves families of citizens. And from what happens in each one of our small families depends the well-being of the greater family. Its stability depends on it. And ultimately, its peace depends on that well-being. And you can take uh, these words from someone who today leads a country where in the past marginality and uh, abandonment have been the breeding ground for magic formulas of the most predictable kind of populism. I am speaking of the same populism that then usually uh, drops its mask and uh, shows its true authoritarian face, the same face that when it is in the government flirts with dangerous actors that hide beyond the reach of our international institutions in order to create uh, some of the threats that today bring us together and lead us to ask her, ask what do we do with these uh, threats and challenges? Challenges have various aspects, but I, w but I will always, always insist that if we want to, uh, uh, if we want to uh, make sure that these threats uh, remain far from us, it is necessary to start by uh, by clearly uh, pointing to the ugly face of authoritarianism, and for that we always need. To, as we go into uh, going in a, a circle, we need to return to the source, the same source. We need to create opportunities for people. We need a global order where all citizens feel included, connected, and represented. An interdependent order where opportunities flow freely from one corner of our planet to the other. We need a balance where in which every day is increasingly more difficult for aspiring dictators 
to blame their failures on supposed asymmetries of the global order. We need to open the doors of opportunity to more to more people, to more citizens, and to never close those opportunities uh, on the pretext of the false notion of sovereignty, which in reality is not sovereignty, but rather arrogance. We need to understand that international security is not simply a right that one can demand, but rather it is a duty that all of us share. In fact, Mr. President, Your Excellencies, my government has found itself in the strange position of having to inaugurate uh, or launch a fight against a threat that in the past was not confronted head-on, but rather it was concealed. I am speaking of obscure actors who, instead of being uh, f fought, were silently accommodated in the hope that no one would notice them. Today, Ecuador is uh, uh, in the midst of a frontal war, an unprecedented war against uh, the traffic of drugs. As uh, mentioned in the last global report on drugs uh, in 2022, Ecuador is the third uh, country in the world with the most cocaine seized. And today, we are um, stepping up our activities more than ever to maximize the seizures of drugs and to dismantle transnational organizations that transport these drugs. We know that we're not the only ones who are fighting this monster. And, uh, by the, by the way, this monster doesn't have only one face, but various faces, such as the trafficking of persons, laundering of assets, illegal trafficking of weapons, and even illegal mining. It is calculated that transnational crime moves an amount of money that oscillates between 1.6 and 2.2 trillion dollars those are figures that exceed by several factors of 10 the entire economy of a country like Ecuador. However, it would be a mistake to quantify the, the consequences of transnational crime only in economic terms. We need to also think of, especially in the irreparable losses in terms of the lives lost and dreams destroyed in the uh, horrifying cries of families but also in the in in this in the uh, silence that it imposes in certain communities today just a few days ago in the in the center of the city of Guayaquil where I where I was born a prosecutor was cowardly assassinated by hitmen from organized crime. This was a uh, an official who was leading uh, various investigations, including certain cases that involve transnational mafias. This uh, murder not only means that Ecuador loses a... Uh, uh, a a very important law and law enforcement official, or that their, his children will grow up without a father. It is a murder that leaves us an additional lesson, and that is that transnational crime requires a transnational solution, and that we have two options. Or we're going to suffer separately from uh, an enemy that acts in a coordinated fashion in different, in various countries in order to um, in order to ignore our laws or we can unite our efforts to vanquish that uh, enemy the events clearly demonstrate that we need more cooperation and I will never tire of insisting on, on this in Ecuador it's, it's not just with record seizures but also with the sacrifice of our uh, officials and, and that we're demonstrating that we de we deserve this assistance and this international uh, help 
to strengthen institutions. And also, these are institutions where these officials are working selflessly. I want to take advantage of this opportunity to work together also to combat against gender violence. In the case of Ecuador, the disappearance of a courageous woman, uh, a lawyer, a mother, and daughter, should be the symbol of this challenge, of the challenge of combating against uh, violence against women. Ecuador has demonstrated that we're there for the world. The world can count on us, and I'm sure that the world will support us and help us in these challenges. Human human mobil in, in the area of human mobility, we have taken decisions that have been applauded these days. We're not only maintaining our long trajectory as a transit country, a country that welcomes and, and is a refuge for migrants, but uh, but also traditionally we have been one of the biggest uh, host countries of refugees in the entire Western Hemisphere. But beyond simply welcoming uh, refugees, I want to refer to the treatment that those citizens receive when they enter our country. In Ecuador, we are, make special efforts to ensure, to guarantee the rights, and especially, more importantly, the integration of migrants particularly when uh, uh, we're talking about families whose origin, countries of origin do not offer alternatives of a better life, and, and these people have no other option other than to flee. For example, half a million Venezuelans who today live in Ecuador, we're one of the three main... Uh, destinations for migrants from this country and in spite of the our budgetary difficulties we as we provide assistance to this population with health care education and other social services we have also begun a a, a long process of uh, uh, of regularization of their status just think mr president what this means in a small country such as ours now, think about the impact of a population of that size would have on each one of your countries. This is why I repeat, Ecuador is there for the world. The world can count on Ecuador, on Ecuador. And I know that the world will support us with this plan for regularizing the status of our Venezuelan brethren who have had to flee their country. I have the firm hope that this will be the case. But it's not, it's not just that. Ecuador is also fulfilling uh, its uh, uh, responsibility in the climate crisis as a country that is the uh, emitter of, uh, of uh, greenhouse gases. We represent barely 0.18% of global emissions. And, and yet, without the need to to wait or the need to suggest to us. My government took the decision to convert Ecuador in the first country in Latin America and the fourth in the world to adopt a trans cross-cutting policy towards environmental transition, including uh, uh, creating a special ministry for this. And this is not merely an issue of how how much a country has industrialized in the past, but rather how much a country can contribute in the future. This is why almost a year ago, in the framework of the conference, uh, the climate conference in Glasgow, I announced the creation of a new marine reserve called Hermandad, or Brotherhood, in the Galapagos Islands, which increased by 60,000 square kilometers the protected area of this natural uh, her heritage site of humanity. That same year, this was further complemented with the signature of a declaration for the preservation and management of ecosystems included in the marine corridor of the East Tropical Pacific. This was uh, 
uh, sign, we signed this we, together with my colleagues from the Presidents of Colombia, Costa Rica, and Panama to provide a new dimension and uh, political impetus to the uh, goals of the Marine Corridor. Thus, we are opening new opportunities for cooperation, financing, and technical assistance for the conservation not only of equatorial biodiversity or regional biodiversity, but rather global biodiversity. But we are uh, we're more ambitious. We are looking beyond that. It's in this same very institution where uh, we have uh, promoted the mandate of the General Assembly on the environment in order to negotiate the, a future treaty on the uh, pollution, plastic pollution. And so, in the area of uh, environmental conservation, Ecuador is also there for the world. Mr. President, in each one of the topics I have uh, mentioned here, in each one of these challenges and uh, uncertainties that the future holds before us, Ecuador supports a conviction that the we need to find the responses within ourselves. In our understanding that we as human beings share this planet Earth and what we have in common is much bigger than what divides us, what separates us. And in fact, it could happen that we are not even aware that we have within our in our hands keys uh, and to so solve problems that uh, other uh, nations or other individuals are confronting. In fact, that is what happened with Matteo, the student that we managed to uh, uh, transport from Ukraine. If in each on each challenge we apply that form of thinking, if we uh, dare to uh, tackle each threat uh, from a, a common position, we will we will go much farther. For example, take the food crisis, which today has been aggravated by the uh, conflict in Ukraine, and that has meant uh, the uh, worsening of uh, ma of malnutrition in, mar in various countries. International figures speak of 52 million children uh, younger than five years of age that today suffer malnutrition. 17 million, 17 million uh, suffer from acute malnutrition and 155 million suffer from uh, uh, stunted growth. In Ecuador this uh, uh, problem uh, affects some 30 percent of uh, uh, children younger than two years of age and in the most Tra tragic cases in some of our poorest provinces, the figure is above 35% of, of malnutrition. To confront this problem, my government has uh, been a pioneer. We have created a technical secretariat. Uh, it's called Ecuador uh, Grow Develops Without uh, ch Child Malnutrition. And I have established, set a very clear goal for my term. Reduce, during my term of government, by six percentage points the malnutrition of children. And uh, we have ensured the participation of civil society, academia, the private sector, and local governments in these efforts. And however, we can, we can uh, uh, certainly do even more. We can... Uh, dare to uh, think as a global community. I won't be revealing any kind of secret to you if I tell you how fertile is the land in Ecuador, how productive our land is, if, uh, if that land is worked with optimism and dedication. We are the country where cocoa is, uh, is grown, banana, where we produce shrimp, but also uh, uh, avocado and other, a lot of other uh, agricultural uh, goods. It makes no sense that our children, our children, or children from anywhere in the world suffer hunger. In this situation, or any other situation, and especially given that the land is there to be harvested, not only for food, but also for uh, opportunities. 
This new Ecuador today represents advantages that could serve not only to ease hunger but also to create the this world that is more stable and peaceful that I mentioned where citizens are included on every single day feel more included through the creation of opportunities that is the world that I see that is the world that today we are proposing to you from from uh, Ecuador lastly mr. president your excellencies Former Secretary General of the UN Ban Ki Moon said, "Peace is a is a form of being, of relating to others, of living on this planet. It cannot be decreed only through treaties. It must be nourished with rights and uh, the abilities uh, and skills of every single individual." End of quote. I believe that in very few words that encapsulates the spirit of what I've tried to say. And I will take this opportunity to express the support of Ecuador for the uh, efforts of the Secretary General, the current Secretary General, Antonio Guterres. I would like to, in conclusion, thank everyone for the, for the overwhelming support uh, for the election of my country as a member of the Security Council for the period 2023-2024. Our participation will take place in a context in which uh, humankind is uh, experiencing a period of uh, uncertainty and uh, unprecedented challenges. But you can always be certain that, as we have always done, Ecuador will be there fulfilling its duty to the world. We will conduct ourselves with coherency and uh, transparency, with an emphasis on supporting humanitarian assistance and peacekeeping operations, on the protection of civilians in situation of armed conflict, on the agenda of women, peace and security, on the fight against arms trafficking, and always always addressing emerging challenges in the context of sustaining peace. In all this, in each decision, in each effort at mediation, and each opportunity to contribute to the stability and peace of our planet, you can be certain, Mr. President, Your Excellencies, that Ecuador will be there for you and for your uh, citizens. Ecuador will be there for the world. Thank you very much for your kind attention for this intervention. May God bless us all. I wish to thank the Constitutional President of the Republic of Ecuador for the statement just made, and I request protocol to escort His Excellency.